It's never enough to just read books. It's all about implementing what you learned. In this video, I'll share two key learnings from the book Psychology of Money and how you can implement this in your life. So let's get started. Hi investors and welcome to the video. Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel is one of my favorite books on finance when it comes to finance category. And in this video, I'll share two learnings with you which you can implement practically on an immediate basis in your life. So let's get started with the very first learning. Morgan Housel says that behavior is more important than intelligence when it comes to investing decisions. I always tell my investors and participants that stock investing is more about temperament than information. It's in fact 1% information and 99% temperament. Now, typically if you notice what, what investors are doing, they're running behind information. They're running behind tip, you know, more and more information, maybe more and more knowledge so that they can get on, get hold to those stocks or maybe schemes which can give them huge returns, right? Practically, it doesn't really work like that. I mean, getting an information is important. It's, it's, it's an important thing to have. It's a foundation of your investing journey, but that's just 1%. It's your temperament which will determine whether you were, you were able to use that information in the right manner or not. Now, Morgan Housel puts this very beautifully in the book. This is what he says. Financial success is not hard science. It is a soft skill where how you behave is more important than what you know. Interesting, right? So how you behave when the market goes up and down, how you react, how you respond, all this is more important than what information you have or what stocks you have in your portfolio. Because even if 10 people have the same stocks, let's say on day one, do you think they will make the same returns in the next 10 years? Absolutely not, because their temperament will determine how long they stay invested, how do they behave, how do they react, how do they respond to the, to the, new, to the news, to the information, to the market and all those things, right? So that's where the temperament roles becomes, becomes very, very crucial in your success in investing journey. Now, what can you do about this? There are two pillars of investing. Number one, information. Number two, wisdom or temperament. So temperament is a very broad term. You can uh, include patience in this, you can include your behavior, you can include your uh, wisdom, all that comes under temperament, right? So you have information and you have temperament, right? Information you can get from newspapers, from, you know, reading all those articles on, uh, uh, in journals, maybe uh, watching YouTube videos, maybe uh, watching some, some other uh, content which is, which is uh, useful for your uh, knowledge. So information is available freely on internet and there is no, no scarcity of information, right? So that's one pillar of, uh, of investing. The second pillar, which is temperament. How can you develop that? In my view, the most profound way of uh, building your temperament in the right direction is reading books. So all those newspaper articles and journals and uh, reports and all those will give you information, but books will give you the wisdom on how to use that information. And without this wisdom, this information has, has absolutely no value, right? So you, whether you are taking some advisory service or whether you are doing your own research, in both the cases, reading books is mandatory. You cannot escape that. Because even if you are taking someone's services, it's your temperament which will determine how successful you are. Sure, their advice is important. Sure, what, what you are buying is important. But if your temperament is not in the right place, you will end up panicking somewhere, sometime or the other and you will not make the returns which you can make, right? So it's your temperament which will make a difference and that's why you have to read books whether you are doing the research on yourself, uh, you are doing the research yourself or you are taking someone's service, right? So that's key learning number one from this book that behavior is more important than intelligence or temperament is more important than information or knowledge. Second key lesson from this book is True wealth is what you don't see. Now, very interesting point he has put in. Can you see the portfolio size of your friends, their stocks portfolio or mutual fund portfolio? Or how many friends know the portfolio size of your stocks and mutual funds? Maybe none or maybe very, very few, right? And that's where the problem is. You cannot show off 
with such financial assets. The only way you can do so is by having that big house, that luxury car, those expensive uh, watches and maybe gadgets and luxury vacations, lavish vacations, and then putting up those pictures on Insta and FB. Right? Now, nothing wrong in here. Just, just hear, me, hear me out. I'll share what Morgan is trying to, what, what he wants to convey. He says that most of the time an individual will buy something or the other to impress people around him or her. Right? So that, that, that's the psychology. If you think about it, when you're buying something, just, just go deep down your brain and your, and your heart and see what, what, what is driving you to buy that. Yeah. And one of the reasons, one of the significant reasons can be that you want to impress people or you want to stay in a, stay in a certain group or a circle. Now, how I, how I look at it is, we, we assume that people having all those luxuries which we you know crave for or which we desire, they are having like a perfect dream life or they are having that dream life which you you want to have, right? Maybe they are, but but it's not necessary. We don't really know what they are dealing with, right? Consider this. I'm sure there are people in your life, you may not be aware, there are people in your life who envy you for the kind of luxuries you have got because they don't have those luxuries. Just, just look around the kind of people who come to your house or who, whom you deal with on a daily basis or a regular basis, there would be people who do not have those luxuries which you have got, right? And they are also dreaming the same way you are that I wish I have luxuries like the so-and-so, like this person and then my life would be sorted, right? And here you are sitting and cribbing and saying that, you know, my, my life doesn't, doesn't work and there are so many things I need, so many things I do not have. And once I have those things, then everything will be sorted. So what makes you think that once you have those few more luxuries, everything will be perfect in your life? Not necessary, right? And in the, in the, in the chase of getting all those things, you keep on buying those big houses and dream car and all those things and keep on taking more and more EMI. And that's what, uh, you know, shows up to the world as, as wealth. But as Morgan is putting it very interestingly, he's saying wealth is something which you cannot see. What you see is most likely a loan, most likely an EMI, right? Wealth is something which is lying down with you and that is giving you maybe some kind of a passive income. That's more likely a wealth than having those luxury things, which is actually taking money out from your pocket on a daily basis in terms of EMI. So Morgan says the fastest way to lose money is to spend on things to show off. Now. What can you do about this? Here is what my uh, submission is. Whenever you are buying something and the cost of that is more than 30% of your monthly income, not yearly income, of your monthly income, that single product or service, the cost of that service or product is more than 30% of your monthly income, think twice before purchasing that. Yeah. Now, there would be certain things, for example, maybe, maybe a TV or maybe some basic uh, stuff in the kitchen or maybe a washing machine and there would be certain things but most of the time you will see that you are ending up purchasing th something which is more like a luxury and not really a necessity or a need right so 30 percent rule you can apply whenever you are buying something which is more than 30 percent think twice even if you are buying it on emi right so these two things you can implement in your life on an immediate basis number one start reading books and number two think twice before purchasing something which is more than 30 percent of your monthly income i hope you will be able to implement this in your life so that you can really you know make use of this this book's learnings and as i said this 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 book is this a video is not a substitute for reading the book. So please make sure you read the book because there are many, many other lessons around it. But these two are the ones which I believe are like low hanging fruits and you can implement immediately in your life. Thank you so much. If you like the video, please click on the like, subscribe and share with your friends and family. Thank you.